हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द एन आई ओ एस आई एम कौशल किशोर फ्रॉम सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ साउथ बिहार टुडे आई विल डिस्कस विद यू ऑन अ टॉपिक व्हिच इज इंटाइटल्ड स्टेजेस ऑफ थिंकिंग प्याजेज थियोरी एंड ब्रूनर्स थियोरी द ऑब्जेक्टिव्स ऑफ टुडे सेशन आर टू मेक द व्यूअर्स फेमिलराइज अबाउट डिफरेंट स्टेजेज ऑफ थिंकिंग एज डिस्क्राइब्ड इन प्याजेज थियोरी ऑफ कॉग्नेटिव डेवलपमेंट and in brunner's theory of cognitive development it is expected that after completion of this session the viewers will be able to recall the piaget's theory of cognitive development define the technical terms used in piaget's theory give new examples related to various indicators of a particular stage of thinking identify various thinking behaviors exhibited by a child in different stages of thinking recall the brunner's theory of cognitive development define the technical terms used in brunner's theory compare the views of piaget and brunner related to cognitive development of a child plan their teaching in light of both the theories let us first talk about piaget's theory before going to the different stages suggested by piaget in his theory let's understand the background of this theory piaget who was who is known as swiss psychologist was basically a biologist while he was working in alfred binet's laboratory and when binet was working on an intelligence test for the children the reasons children gave for their wrong answers fascinated jean piaget and prompted him to study the thinking behind their answers the students were answering the children were answering wrong and they were explaining their wrong answers and it attracted uh, piaget to work upon then he along with his wife who was earlier his student they started observing their own three children and then piaget devised a model describing how humans go about making sense of their world by gathering and organizing information according to piaget certain ways of thinking are quite simple for an adult are not so simple for a child for example if i ask a question to an adult that can you be at three places at the same time that uh, suppose in delhi in mumbai in patna obviously uh, an adult will say no it's not possible however in case of children it's not so simple simply they will not say that no i cannot be at the three places they may say yes i can be at three places at same time that's why piaget said that certain ways of thinking that are quite simple for an adult are not so simple for a child further piaget proposed that our thinking processes change radically though slowly but from birth to maturity from birth to maturity they changes and the changes are radical and piaget uh, said that four factors which interact to influence changes in thinking are biological maturation activity social experiences and equilibration let us understand what these factors are biological maturation means the genetically programmed structure in a person's body obviously uh, we cannot do much more about this thing because it's a genetically programmed situation what we have to take care about this biological maturation that we must provide proper nourishment to the child so that he or she can grow properly the second factors which interact to influence thinking is activity with physical maturation comes the increasing ability to act on the environment and learn from it as we act on the environment exploring testing observing and organizing information we alter our thinking processes we explore something we test it we observe something in our environment we organize information from the environment and then accordingly we alter our thinking process the third factor is social transmission in social transmission a child learns from others experiences for example if he sees uh, someone that uh, people are not stepping down from a moving bus they learn that we should not step down from a moving bus if it could not happen then we each and every child had to reinvent everything because of this social transmission we need not to reinvent everything 
The fourth factor is equilibration, which is the most, one of the most factors, which, uh, which is a part of Piaget's theory. And before moving this uh, to this fourth factor equilibration, let us understand some related concept this, to this equilibration. Piaget mentioned that all species inherit two basic tendencies. One is organization and one is adaptation. Organization includes combining, arranging, recombining and rearranging. While adaptation includes the adapting the environment. Regarding talking about organization, Piaget mentioned that people are born with a tendency to organize their thinking processes into psychological structures and Piaget termed them, coined the term schemes. And according to Piaget, schemes are the basic building blocks of thinking. These schemes can be very small and specific like recognizing a dog, a scheme of recognizing a dog or larger like how to drive a vehicle, how to drive a car, a scheme of driving a car. So, schemes can be very small as well as very large. As a person's thinking processes become more organized and new schemes develop, behavior also becomes more sophisticated and better suited to the environment. When a person interacts with the environment, different schemes are developed, different schemes are connected and schemes for larger, uh, scale, larger schemes are developed, then uh, thinking becomes more sophisticated. Adaptation includes two things, one is assimilation and another is accommodation. Assimilation means one is trying to understand something new by fitting it into what we already know. If I have a scheme already in my mind and I find something new, first I try to ac accept or fit that new thing or new scheme into my existing scheme. For example, if first time I see a child see sees a guinea pig, since guinea pig appears like a rabbit and there is already a scheme in a uh, child's mind to identify, uh, to recognize a rabbit, first he thinks that it is a rabbit. It is a kind of assimilation when he is trying to understand something new by fitting it into what we, what he already knows. And the second thing is accommodation, when that new thing is not assimilated with the existing scheme, then the child must change existing scheme to respond to a new situation. For example, when a child he already knows he already has a scheme of riding a cycle, but now he finds a cycle with a different kind of brakes. In some cycles there are this kind of brakes, in some cycle there are this kind of brakes and the child is already knowing this kind of braking system in a cycle. He has a scheme in his mind how to use brakes, this kind of brakes in a cycle, but now he found a cycle which this, with this kind of brakes. So, this is a new scheme is required here. So, the uh, child learns to ride a cycle with this different kind of brakes. In this process, he accommodate and he changes existing schemes to respond to this new situation. People adapt to their increasingly complex environment by using existing schemes whenever these schemes work, that is assimilation. If the existing uh, schemes are working for the new situations, I do not change my existing schemes, it is assimilation. And by modifying and adding to new to their schemes when something new is needed, that is accommodation. So, the process of assimilation or accommodation goes on. There are certain situations when neither assimilation nor accommodation is used. For example, if I am passing by and two people are talking in their language which is unknown to me, I do not care. Neither I try to assimilate nor I try to accommodate, I simply ignore it. According to Piaget, actual changes in thinking takes place through the process of equilibration. An equilibration is an act of searching for balance. Piaget mentions that people continuously test the adequacy of their thinking process in order to achieve that balance. That is existing schemes works, equilibrium exists, if not then disequilibrium, so accommodation. Let us understand this thing with, with the help of two examples. 
first take an example uh, a glass filled with water there is a glass and water is filled in that water is stable kind of equilibrium is there now i put some pebbles into this glass and the equilibrium of this water level is disturbed this situation is called disequilibrium after some time when the pebbles are set at the bottom new equilibrium is achieved earlier this was the equilibrium of water level now pebbles are, are added into it, the that glass and uh, this uh, condition of disequilibrium came now new equilibrium is achieved at this stage uh, this is kind this is situation of equilibrium disequilibrium and again equilibrium another example we can take that suppose as a child i know uh, that sanskrit is the oldest language of world this is an equilibrium state of my knowledge of my thinking i am uh, my existing scheme is working and i am happy with that that equilibrium is there one day i came across one person told me that no sanskrit is not the oldest language of the world tamil is the oldest language of the world now the my existing scheme is disturbed my equilibrium is disturbed there is a situation of disequilibrium so i have to either exist uh, work go with the existing scheme or i have to change my existing scheme to accommodate the new information i will try to find what will i do i will try to find which is true whether sanskrit is the oldest language or the tamil is the oldest language and after searching i came to know that tamil is the the person who was right and the tamil is the oldest language of the world so now i accept it that no sanskrit is not the oldest language of the world tamil is the oldest language of the world so my new equilibrium is achieved and thus my thinking is enhanced earlier my equilibrium was there that sanskrit is the oldest language with the, uh, that information that no sanskrit is not the oldest language a kind of situation of disequilibrium came and then with the certainty of the new information no that that tamil is the oldest language new kind of new status of equilibrium is there thus a process of equilibrium disequilibrium and equilibrium works and the process of thinking goes like this according to piaget and this is the concept of equilibration so we then when we talked about four factors which are influencing which are interacting to influence thinking or biological maturity uh, activity social transmission and this equilibration one thing is important here to note that optimum level of disequilibrium is required what does it mean it means that the new information or new thing which is disturbing my existing equilibrium if it is too less in quantity it is not sufficient then i will ignore it and simply go with my existing equilibrium so i will not try to accommodate nothing uh, new then it will not work another case if the information or the point which is disturbing my equilibrium is too of is too high level then again i will try to ignore it i will not take so much pain then i will not go to the new equilibrium again i will keep with my equilibrium earlier equilibrium so to change in thinking process it is important to note that optimum level of this equilibrium is required now we come to the uh, four stages as given by piaget in his theory piaget believed that all people pass through the same four stages in exactly the same order but different period of transition may be there for a different child the piaget emphasize that levels are these four one will pass this stage one and then this come to the stage two and then this comes to the stage three and then to come to the stage four he mentioned uh, time duration for each and every stage but it, it is also to understand that one may take one child may take his or her own time to transit from one stage to another stage that's why orlando and macado in 1996 concluded that knowing a student's age is never a guarantee you will know how the child thinks for example if the uh, if piaget said that this is the phase of stage 1 0 to 2 years and the, in this stage a child is thinking in this way now if i encounter a child of 1 uh, and 1/2 year i cannot guarantee that he is thinking on the same way there are chances that his or her phase of transition was shorter and now he has moved to the next stage 
The four stages given by Piaget are sensory motor stage which prevails from 0 to 2 years. According to Piaget, the second stage is pre-operational stage which prevails from 2 to 7 years. The third stage is concrete operational stage which prevails 7 to 11 years and the fourth stage is formal operational stage that prevails from 11 years onwards to the adulthood. Now, we discuss about these stages one by one. The first stage which Piaget talked about is sensory motor stage which prevails from 0 to 2 years. In this stage, the thinking of a child involves seeing, hearing, moving, touching, tasting and so on. During this stage, development of object permanence is there. What is the meaning of object permanence? Object permanence means when the child accepts or understands the permanent existence of an object. Let us understand with the help of one example. For a very, uh, in, uh, for example, six month infant, up to six month age infant, a baby, when you well, the baby is or the infant is playing with a toy, you simply uh, take away this toy and hide it. The child immediately forgets about the toy. The child thinks that there is no toy. Out from the sight, out of the sight, out of the existence is no more. But within this sensory motor stage, after certain periods, after generally after six months, the stage of object permanence comes when even you hide the toy, the child understands that toy is there. Though it is not in front of my eyes, but it is there. That is why when a child achieves this object permanence status stage, when you uh, snatch the toy and hide it, the child tries to find it under the sheet or somewhere else. So, this is an indicator of development of object permanence, which is achieved in this sensory motor stage, which is from 0 to 2 years. In the same stage, beginning of logical goal directed actions starts. Again, the same situation, a very uh, 2 or 3 month old infant, you give him or her a plastic toy container with lid. First, the child tries to take out the toys, but since the lid is there and the toys do not come out, he tries to uh, take out the toys, but after uh, one or two attempts or certain attempts, he just leaves it because it is not possible for him to take them, take the toys out. But when the status, this stage beginning of logical goal directed actions starts, what will child do? That first he will try to take out the toys and if the toys are not coming out, he will observe it, he will open the lid, takes out the toys and if uh, while uh, taking out the toys, if some toys are stuck, he will try to shake the container. In the same sensory motor stage, learning to reverse action. In the, uh, take the previous example of this uh, plastic toy container with lid, the child can also refill the container with those toys. One thing is important here to mention and to note that in this stage, the child is learning to reverse action, but not reverse thinking. There are two different things. Reverse action is related to motor activity, however, reverse thinking is some higher ability which we will discuss in coming slides. In this sensory motor stage, reflex action of a child converts into intentional activities. Then the next stage of this Piaget's theory uh, comes and that is called pre-operational stage. The term is pre-operational the domain of this or uh, the duration of this pre-operational stage is according to Piaget is 2 to 7 years. Before understanding the concept of pre-operational stage, let us understand what is the term operational yeah, operation means. According to Piaget, operation are the actions that are carried out and reversed mentally rather than physically. Remember the previous example, when child was refilling the container, the toy container, it was a physical activity. He was reversing the action physically. In operation, the process are reversed mentally rather than physically. Since it is pre-operational stage, so these kind of operations are not there again. 
this stage is pre-operational, so absence of reversible thinking, operation is not there. Again, an example of reversible thinking is that that if if A is B's brother, so B is also A's brother, but in pre-operational, since it is an operational in which the child is capable to think reversibly, it's a mental process. But in pre-operational stage, the child is not capable to think reversibly. So there is absence of reversible thinking in pre-operational stage, and absence of conservation is also there in pre-operational stage. What is the meaning of conservation here? Conservation. Let us take an example. I kept water, same quantity of water, into different containers. The same quantity of water is first put in a container with the uh, broad circumference. It's a broader vessel or broader glass. Glass. In this situation, the level of water is lower. Then, in front of a child, I poured the same water into another glass, which is of narrow dimension. Then the child thinks. That uh, the water quantity is more in the glass with narrow circumference. If a child is able to understand the water quantity is same, then is the stage, uh, stage of conservation has been achieved. If it is not accepted by the child, then the status of conservation is not achieved. In pre-operational stage, the conservation is absent. What is present in pre-operational stage? presence of semiotic function. It means the child symbols to represent an object that is not present. Child uses such kind of symbols. For example, if you see around that children are riding, are riding a stick and saying that it's my horse or it's my bike. This kind of semiotic function which is found in pre-operational stage. In pre-operational stage, two to seven years, the child is egocentric. Here egocentric does not mean selfish, but Children assume that every else share their feelings, reactions and perspectives. For example, child thinks that if I love dogs, everybody loves dogs. <laughs> That's why they don't understand in this stage that your right hand is not on the same side as theirs when you are facing them. For example, if I'm a child and I'm saying this is my right hand, someone is standing in front of me and he or she is saying that this is his or her right hand, I will not accept in this stage. I will say no, since my right hand is this side, your right hand is also this side. This is situation of egocentric. Then comes the concrete operational stage. In this operational stage, presence of reversibility and conservation is there. The reversible thinking is there with the child. Presence of classification is there. Classification is also related to reversibility in which ability to think through a series of steps then mentally reverse the steps and return to the starting point. For example, a child can classify plates with the, by size, then again classify by color, then again classify by material, etc. One says steel plate, glass plate, melamine plate, for, like that. In the concrete operational stage, presence of seriation is there, that a child can orderly arrange from large to small or vice versa. In concrete operational stage again, development of a complete and very logical system of thinking is there, but the system of thinking is still tied to physical reality. The child can think or logically arrange only to the physical real, uh, physical situations. That is why it is concrete operational. The next stage is, the fourth stage is, that is the highest stage according to Piaget, is formal operational stage. In this focus of thinking can shift from what is to what might be. It means we can think, a child can think instead of a physically present thing, imaginary about the imaginary things, what might be. Abstract thinking is there. The child can make different permutation and combination in his or her mind without the physical presence of a thing. Hypothetical deductive reasoning is there, inductive reasoning is there. And in this situation, adolescent egocentrism is also there. Adolescent egocentrism means they are not denying others perception. In uh, egocentrism in previous stage, the child was not ready to accept others viewpoint. He was thinking that everybody is thinking according to his or her viewpoint. 
But in this adolescent egocentrist, the child is not denying others' perception, but he or she is focusing on own beliefs. Now, uh, the later part of this presentation is Brunner's theory. Jerome's as Brunner, like other developmentalists, hypothesized that one's thought processes evolves as a result of maturation, training and experiences through a series of sequential stages. In his theory, Brunner proposed three stages. First is inactive, second is iconic and third is symbolic. In Brunner's three stages, inactive stages is characterized by the child's representation of things and events in terms of appropriate motor response and activities. The child is unable to make use of language images or other symbolic representation, representations, only motor representations are there, responses are there. The child acts out and represents them through non-verbal activities based on motor actions. So, there is no development of language, so the actions are non-verbal and motor actions in this inactive stage. In the iconic stage of Brunner, this stage is characterized by the child's representation on things and events in terms of sensory images or mental pictures. Again, the things uh, has been shifted from the physical presence to the mental presence, but again in terms of images or pictures, not in terms of language in iconic stage. The third stage according to Brunner is symbolic stage in which things and events not necessarily depend upon the motor activities or sensory image or mental pictures. Here, since the language development has taken place, the symbolic representation in the form of words, symbols and other imaginary abstract phenomena is there. For example, in this stage if you ask a child that okay, you have uh, five mangoes, you say your sister has three mangoes, so if we divide equally these mangoes among five people. Uh, what will be the uh, division magnitude? Then the child in this stage, symbolic stage can think. He can develop imaginary verbal rules in his mind because language development has taken place while this was not possible in previous two stages suggested by the Brunner. So, uh, friends in this session we discussed about background of Piaget's theory, different terms used in Piaget's theory four stages according to Piaget's theory and three stages according to Brenner's theory. Now, you should after this session you must ask yourself that students in your class are at which stage of thinking according to Piaget or Brunner. You must try to identify them. You should think that are you ready to accommodate the difference of transition in your class as we discussed in our session that uh, everybody has his or her own time of transition from one stage to another transition. Third one that as a teacher what can you do to promote next stage of thinking in your students? You must think about this thing. I hope uh, this session would have been helpful to understand the Piaget's concepts and the Brunner's concept regarding child development and thinking. We will meet in some other session with some other topic. Thanks, thank you for patient listening. Thank you, thank you very much.